picked our next contestant on Who's Fabulous is uh, someone that we we haven't had her on the show in way too long, Dr. Grand Pichet. Uh, she's somebody who has worked in a lot of different capacities, touched oh, yeah. a lot of different lives. Uh, such a joy to have her. Sarah Cho is joining us, and I know that you have some things that you would like to say. Well, I don't even know. Like, I, if I start talking about Sarah, I'll probably talk the entire 15 minutes that we have her. But Sarah is uh, very uniquely talented in so many different ways. First of all, she's probably the most uh, hardworking, dedicated, resilient uh, person I've ever met in my life. Um, she had she no matter what area she works in whether it's clinical operations she is spectacular and she's a driver beyond all drivers and she's a force and sarah has contributed to card and to the field as a whole in so many different ways um and i i'd love to bring her on and talk a little bit about her journey and how she started at card and all the things I forced her to do over the years. Somehow we lost her. Hopefully we're getting her back. She was there and then she's gone, but hopefully she's coming back. I, I just yeah. want to say the, the first time that I ever met Sarah Cho, it's so funny to me now to look back on, um, as, as I was transitioning from being a card parent to coming to work for card, there were a lot of things that I needed to get up to speed on because the experience of a parent is vastly different than someone who's going to talk about the other side of things for card. And I, there were things that I needed to get to know. And I always say that it's like, you know, imagine you go to Disneyland for years and Disneyland is amazing. And it's this experience and you, you stop at the one, you know, attraction and that is all the, you know, things that you see. But I know people that have gotten to take the tour of there's an entire city underneath Disneyland. And when you get to do the tour underneath and you get to see the underside of the rides, and by the way, it's pristine clean. And it's this amazing humming hive of activity where people are working to make the joy up on the upper level. This is exactly what it was like for me coming to work at Card. I got to go underground at Disneyland and I got to see all the people that were moving all of the levers. I had no idea. Therapists just showed up at my door and I didn't think about all the people that it took yeah. to get a therapist to my door. Never even occurred to me, Dr. Grand Pichet, because my house was on fire, right? But then I got to take the tour downstairs and see all the people that were doing things. And I got to watch a lot of recorded interviews that people at CARD had done. I saw an interview that Sarah Cho had done and then um, you guys invited me, if I wanted to, to come and sit in on a supervisor training. So there was a class of people that were there that were getting trained to be supervisors, and I got to sit in. And, and that's where I met Sarah Cho. She came in and was a fireball. Like, you know, she yeah. just comes in and brings all of the energy with her. And, you know... I remember she used the word per perseverate in a sentence, not about autism, not about, you know, she just, it was just like a sentence about anything. And I was like, who uses the word perseverate in a sentence? I do it all the time now. Uh, but at the time I was like, who does that? And, yeah. and she was taking the principles of ABA and using them to teach us. So yeah. she was giving us regular rewards uh, and she's here. So it, but it was so educational for me. And I remember leaving there and going, I want to teach like her, um, because she's a fireball. So anyway, so she, yeah, she was there. Is. What happened? I, I think we were having some, and then she was there. Issues. And then I said, she's there and she's not there. Yeah. And I, she just uh, texted me and said that. It's oh a no. Little, it's, Cause it's yeah. So, I mean, we can, it's maybe choppy. we should, oh. maybe we can reschedule Sarah for another day uh, because uh, I do want to definitely. Well, we don't have the next person. <laughs> That's fine. I, I, we can, we can talk a little bit because uh, there are so many things that I want to just say about how amazing these folks are. All of these folks who are just incredible uh, just, you know, talented people. But Shannon, isn't it interesting how they all 
uh, like, you know, and I, I don't want to go on and on about obstacles, but honestly, staying in a position or in a field or in, in care of children for 20 plus years is not an easy task. It really is not. And you talk about, like, we were just talking about Sarah and, and of course, all the folks on the other days that we've seen as well. But, you know, these guys go through a, a lots of obstacles, like, uh, payers for every family who don't want to pay, Re you know, new rules, new laws. Just yesterday, Shannon, uh, we were looking at the new manual that has come out from TRICARE and it has a whole set of new restrictions for uh, getting treatment for the children. And so, you know, these folks that we've been talking to are amazing because no matter what you put in front of them, they still have the energy and the incentive and the drive to keep pushing forward, you know? And to, and I used to, when I'd go to work every day, uh, gosh, you know, 10 hour days for so many years, I uh, never even felt the time go by because from the minute I arrived, it was this exercise of problem solving all day long, right? It was, Okay, what problem do I have to solve in HR? What do I have to solve in ops and in, in legal and whatever it is? And uh, treating kids with autism, I feel to a large extent is the same thing. It's a puzzle, right? And you kind of have to figure out like, why is the child not progressing here? And what do I need to do to help? And what things do I need to change? And how do I train my people differently? And all these, it's all problem solving. And all these folks that we're talking to are spectacular at remaining calm and problem solving and helping others see that path as well. Yeah, I feel like even even the amount of, like, like that whole Disneyland thing, when I saw the underground of what was happening, I, I was so filled with hope because it was clear how many people care on a regular basis, but now, with 10 years of perspective, I've, I've watched you guys face so many challenges. I mean, let's just talk about what happened when COVID hit. Yeah. And, and I was already feeling so grateful to work with so many professionals who constantly, no matter what is thrown, go, all right, how do we get back to job one, which is making sure that these kids are making progress. Yeah. And in this scientifically proven, empathetic way of working with them with it preserves yeah. their dignity. Like, how do we, how do we do that? And I watched all of you when COVID hit, you had just, you know, started retirement like three days before and, and it was all hands on deck and everyone worked 12, 13, 16 hour days for yeah. the first two weeks. And I watched the clinical team say, how are we going to continue services if we can't be at the center and, and I, I've never been prouder. I, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get emotional again. I have never been prouder um, to be associated with all of you To but that's not the only time you guys have gone through when insurance came. I mean, all of us parents, we were like, we want insurance. We want Honestly, insurance. Yeah. I, right. And we couldn't wait for it. None of us could see, you could see, cause I swear you can see around the corners, but none of us could see that the good thing was going to bring some challenges too. And in those first six months after insurance hit and, and all the machinations, because insurance, ooh, that's a whole other thing. And watching you guys keep coming back to, okay, but let's get back to job one. How are yeah. we, this? now we got this new thing, but how are we going to get back to doing therapy, helping kids, teens, and adults to get the support that they need, learn what they need to learn. It's, I'm a little in awe of all of you. And, and I love that you, you know, cause I, I get the opportunity to thank you as often as I can. Uh, it's still not enough, but I love that you always say, but it's a team, it's a team. And that we're getting yes. with these shows, we're getting to see some of the people that you have have helped to bring into this world and they lean in with you to make job number one happen it's incredible it it's is humbling really, it is really incredible and th this is you know and i don't know honestly shannon and card has grown tremendously right over the last 30 years 
And, but I, don't, I just don't even know uh, any organization, whether it's within autism, ABA, or, or some other field, where you have uh, such a large, I mean, we have about 30 people now who are, have been here for over 20 years, right? And this is a pretty large group of people who are spread across the country um, and are still today as dedicated as they were 20 years ago. And that's pretty astounding because, uh, you know, it just, it goes to tell you that the, the folks who are treating children, and this is really important for parents, I think, because as you and I are both, we're writing something now separately, right, about quality ABA versus just regular, whatever is called ABA. And the truth is that uh, quality ABA, part of the reason that we have such quality at CARD is these people, is their love and their dedication and their commitment. And no matter what they uh, are facing, they continue to be dedicated to the children and to the families. And that's pretty tremendous in my mind. I'm muted, sorry. We've got one of those people joining us now in the studio. And this is someone, you want to talk about someone who is respected and revered at CARD. Like I have never heard anyone say anything that wasn't reverential about this, this lady. Um, and I just want, I just want to spend more time with her. Uh, I feel like I have not gotten enough Teresa time. So we're talking about Teresa Contreras and uh, she's remarkable and I, I think has had a wonderful influence, but I'd love for you to talk about her, Dr. Grand Pichet. Absolutely. Teresa is incredible. And uh, on a different show, of course, we talked with Sue, who's also involved with training, but Teresa is in charge of our training department for supervisors and has been for many years. And she is, of course, before that, I have very fond memories of going down to San Diego and the two of us would uh, see children together. And um, uh, Teresa has always been a spectacular clinician, uh, but she has a very, very unique ability to train uh, BCBAs uh, who, you know, as you know, Shannon, we often talk about, our, I think you refer to them as baby BCBAs, the ones that are straight out of uh, university and just got their master's. And listen, that is all of Teresa's life. She receives these individuals and uh, really, I want to say, like nourishes them, right? And gives them everything they need to be successful. And people who might not even make it at card will years later will say, well, the best training I received was at CARD. So, and that we have to thank Teresa for that. So let's bring her on and, and let's ask a little bit about her early history at CARD. There she is. Hi, Teresa. Hello. Hi, how are you guys? Great. It's so Great. good to see you. It's so good to see you. How are you? I'm good. I was uh, looking forward to seeing you both today, so. What a better day yeah. to be. <laughs> As so, well for us. Tell us, tell us when, what year you joined CARD and kind of tell the audience a little bit about all the wonderful things you've done at CARD. Um, I started in 1997, right after I graduated with my bachelor's in psychology, <laughs> you know, responding to an ad on some job board um, and <laughs> thought, well, this seems to be my calling. It was the third time that autism came close to my life. And I was like, wait, this is definitely a sign that I should be doing this. So that's how I started. As far as my career, I um, started as a, what they call now as a behavior technician, moved up. I was promoted to supervisor about a year in. And I think it was after I kind of was always asking, well, why do you do it that way? Or what is it that um this kid learned it like that and this one needed a different strategy to learn so i feel like um i started to understand pretty quickly how vast the spectrum was and i saw it as a puzzle um i know my my parents always said oh, well if you like legos and puzzles and all of those things and i did when i was little and never met a kid on the spectrum that wasn't a little different and didn't need a different strategy. So I jumped into supervision. I 
did some um, management of the San Diego Center and, and helped branch up into different areas of Southern California to get more and more of our services out there. Um, sat at a lot of IEPs and regional center meetings and things like that um, and got to then kind of continue on my path because I feel like training the supervisors is ultimately the way that I found to get to the next level of reaching more and more kids. So I've been doing that since 2012 solely as training supervisors here at CARD. So. That's amazing. I didn't realize it's been actually that long since 2012. And I want to say that Teresa is responsible for not just conducting the training, but actually forming the training, right? And developing the procedures and policies and content and uh, tests and all the amazing things. I can't even imagine, and the mentorship and the mentorship pro uh, process. Can't even imagine the number of BCBAs you've trained across the over the years, right? Because every cohort that you train is something like I don't know twenty people, and yeah. uh, you've how how many do you train in a year? Like eight or so to cohorts. I mean, you're constantly providing these trainings. Yeah, I mean, I I guess it's upwards of one hundred and fifty in an annual year, probably. Unbelievable. Um, Unbelievable. Yeah. I used to I used to do my hash tallies on the kids with on the spectrum, but I guess it kind of gets multiplied by the number of supervisors now that also have the caseloads that we used to manage. So yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's Shannon, amazing. It is amazing. So one of the things I always say is uh, to younger supervisors who are coming in, brand new so I always tell them that. You know, once you really treat a few children, you'll start to feel the joy um, uh, and the joy of changing the child, but also affecting the family. But then if you are lucky enough to be around for longer, you'll start to feel the impact you had on other employees like guardians, uh, where you, people that you mentor, people who uh, you've had some sort of effect in their life and their career. And Teresa would probably be at the top of that list in terms of the number of people she's influenced at CARD. Uh, and I know that a lot of these people still uh, try to come back and ask questions of their original trainer, <laughs> Teresa, right? Yes. And, and the mentorship program is tremendous, the way that they provide mentorship and ongoing oversight and continuing education. Uh, on an ongoing basis for all of our folks is pretty amazing. And I always say, you know, you could tell a lot about a person by what people say about them behind their back, right? And and some of the people that I have the most respect for in the world that are my go-to people that I, I scurry to and I go, I have a question about this and the people that I that I trust with everything those people say the nicest things about you behind your back, Teresa. And they often will say, well, let's ask Teresa. And it's like, all roads lead back to Teresa. Yeah, uh, and yeah. to have that many people yeah. saying that many nice things about you behind your back, uh, it's like, woo, it's almost like you're magic. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's because honestly, uh, Everybody loves you, Teresa, and you have had such an impact on all of us. I can't thank you enough for all the things that you have done and all the things that you're continuing to do. Do you yeah. feel that, that like people say nice things about you behind your back? Are you hip to that? <laughs> I think I think there are. I think there's a lot that say I have a pretty high standard and I know that I do at the same point, I think ultimately, they tend to learn something when they allow us to have an impact on them as a supervisor. And um, so I, I hope that they say good things eventually if they didn't, if they thought I was a little rough in the beginning. <laughs> no, and I think the supervisors say that, but I'm talking about, you know, I'll run to Cecilia Knight with something, yeah. right? Or I run to Dr. Grand Boucher with something, or I run to Evelyn, or I run to Jen Yakos. I mean, these are, these are like, you know, people uh you know that i'm running to and and they'll they'll be like let's ask teresa uh yeah. about certain things and i'm like wow your resume Woo! your referrals yeah. it's pretty good 
Yeah, and, and Teresa, tell us a little also about your own uh, family and stuff, because I always love, like one of the things I think is, is also incredible about you guys is how over the course of the past 20 somewhat years, not only did you uh, continue to help kids and families and train hundreds and hundreds of people, but you also built your own family and your personal life. And, you know, that's a big message for women who uh, are always worried about that in terms of, can I have a balance between my professional life and my personal life? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, when I, when I first decided to have kids, I was like, well, I love my kids and I wouldn't want to give them any less than what I give every kid that I've ever treated. And I think that for me, it was as important to me to come back and do what I was doing as it was to raise my kids and teach, I have two boys, and teach my boys that ultimately you can do both as a, a woman in this world and as a mom. And so that hopefully they are, you know, seeking out to find matches eventually um, in that same way. Um, I, they're older now. Um, I just found out my oldest got into UCLA, Doreen, and I didn't tell you that yet, but he wow. is on his way. And I was excited when he That's gets to do that. That yep. is crazy. It's no joke getting into UCLA these days. He must be brilliant. No joke. And I heard That's two of my old patients that just got into um, high standing universities, UC system and another private one. It's the time of year where everyone's making their their gains. And to, so my kids and my other kids, my, my kids at work too, making that next step in their career. It's exciting. It's very exciting. Um, Those are the things to do. And I love that. I, I love how you can, in one sentence, uh, you know, talk about your own child as well as kids that you've recovered and who are doing so well that they get into these incredible universities. Yeah, and that's just tremendous. And uh, I, I know on behalf of all Cardians and all the families out there whose lives you have changed in such incredible ways, I thank you. Uh, for me personally, it's been a joy having you uh, next to me as we've built this company. It's been uh, just, you know, both on a professional level and on a personal level, social level. I love you very much and miss working with you. And I'm very happy that I can, as I step back from whatever I did at CARD, uh, there are people in charge of departments as incredible as you are. So thank you for that. And I thank you so much for like uh, shaping the next generation of, of people who are gonna be so uh, influential in caring for kids. And I wanna thank, thank you for the, all that and all that on all the family. family. Uh, it's um, absolutely, and congratulations on UCLA. That's amazing. <laughs> so proud, that's awesome. Thank you, Tell Teresa. That's incredible. Wonderful. I will. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a Thank wonderful you. Month. Love you. Take care. Bye. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. Subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.